Hey guys, Sully here, and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. 10v10 Tactical, Apocalypse Imminent. Very different map from usual. Now today I'm commenting on a gameplay that was sent in by Scar. This is the French car. And he is operating a French motorized deck. He says, I only have about 20 hours into the game, and he got inspired by my videos to play. And now he's uh, asking me to do a bit of a commentary on his gameplay. So, let's have it. He's using French Motorized, and, um, well, it's not a, a bad deck for this particular map, but the whole map, especially considering that it is Destruction, just invites a very, very campy playstyle. And that's a problem, because, well, there's not really any opportunity to push. Everything's open, you got the bridge here, 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 and there, and then this little land bridge, if you will. But aside from that, you got no real way to get across the water, aside from using helicopters. Now, he is going to try and get over here. The French car with his 9th Light Armor Brigade. Uh, that's an optimistic term for a motorized group. But sure, let's call it a Light Armor Brigade. I think that's his first mistake. He's trying to get over here with a motorized deck. The only real way that I see getting over here with a motorized deck is that an airborne deck, or at least somebody with helicopters, moves in here first and then captures it, and then you come in with the motorized deck. If you don't do it in that format, and the enemy does try to fly in with helicopters, then the enemy is going to get there first. And more importantly, um, they will have at least some form of defenses set up, especially airborne units such as light infantry, medium range anti-tank guided missiles could be a severe problem over here. And that is what you are going to find. Now, about his uh, unit setup, I'm going to be switching around from him to red 4 to blue 4, etc. Uh, French car, he has Amex 10 RC, Mortar, Fab 2013, HGM in a Fab, Fab 2013, more infantry, you should already be moving, uh, Fab with a Mistral probably, Command Infantry, and an Alouette, right, that's the problem. See, if these gentlemen over here, front towards enemy, if, they, if these would go over there, into Charlie, you would have an actual better chance of getting here. And making sure that the rest of your motorized group catches up. Now, the car gamer uh, is going to provide stingers and highlanders. How did he expect to get them there? Ah, here, the car gamer. Bison. This guy, I'm not sure what he's doing. SPC Spooter. Because with this, he could have already been... Yeah, there we go. Red 4 is already here. He could have already been closer to the objective. Now, note what Red 4 does. They offload a couple of VDV and Commandosi, and they cover it with a KA-52 and an MI-24V. They also have the MI-8Ts with the rocket pods and MI-24D, which can provide both rocket pod support and the Yak-B. So they already have the position. And then Red Force motorized forces are going to catch up. And those guys are really the ones that are going to entrench the position. Now the French car does have a Celtic. He takes down the AK-52 and then loses both helicopters. Uh, I hope that wasn't his command infantry. Was that his command infantry? No, the command infantry is over here. No, it was a UE that I think I saw go down. Okay, so now he spots that the enemy is already here. And this is pretty much when you should immediately abort your action. Don't try to go in. And that's not what he does. He just tries to sit here, so I completely agree with that move. Don't push in. It's too risky. This Aksarit should not really be on the front line. If the enemy has an HGM, and they do, they can easily score 120, 130 points. Mistral in position to engage the gunship over here. They'll probably take it down, provided that they get enough shots at it. Now, the MX-10 RC is in a decent spot over here. But what I'm worried about is that um, all of these forces here, they're too close together. So that means that any artillery strike, or even an airstrike at this point, because their anti-air is, well, very little cluster. It's just getting into position. Any artillery, mortars, stuff like that, will very easily take out this position. SG-27M flies in. I'm not sure why. Oh, there you go. Merc of a 3. And there goes the Merc of a 3. And that's a big loss to Blue 4 early on. Yeah, now you just sit here. 
And see, this is the problem that I have with this particular map. It is so incredibly campy. It is very hard to get across this river. These two bridges, these, pretty much impossible. Because you got units currently in the town, and potentially uh, you're already going to get spotted by units in the town. If not that, then by units over here in this tree line. And potentially, if the enemy team is fast enough, here. You also got a tree line there. So it is very, very hard to get into that position. Then you got this bridge, which is potentially as bad, if not worse. Because you can get detected from units which are probably hiding in here in this tree line. ATGMs are not as easy to hide, although you do have some smaller tree lines here and there that you can make use of. Um, but there's also the risk of a tank dashing out getting a couple of shots off on your vehicles as they try to cross and then getting killed off um over here they do have a bit of a foothold if i was in scar's position i would probably take my forces load them back up and get the hell out pack up try and get across these bridges reinforce this this uh, bridgehead this position only has two buildings but you can still provide some support from the buildings over here and here especially if you have an hgm milan f3 and if you have a Mistral, despite the fact that they only have three missiles left, they can still shoot down one, potentially two helicopters, depending a little bit on what type of helo you're facing. But you need reinforcing of this bulkhead, or um, of this, uh, this bridgehead over here. Over here, well, you're just very unlikely to get in. Of course, he wouldn't know exactly what was in there, but you can see that we have Apostle 6. He was the one who offloaded first. Then there's Fulgrim Mobile, and there's potentially another player there as well, because I think I think I saw Skliff go in there as well. Anyway, you know that helicopters are not longer no longer an issue. No, well, no longer an option, rather. This is bad. This is dreadful. Yaskando is trying to push in with a couple of Perdalus, uh, all of which are getting butchered right as they get into range. Increasingly uh, more damaging fire from the OT Tab 71 and the 62 Ace coming in. And then you have 40 Rov 890, which are just being left to their devices. Which, well, is not going to go down for well. They just have no cover. Um, any gunship worth a damn with just rocket pods, let's say the MI 8, could wipe out this whole group. And then, of course, the OT Tabs, well, they have all the time in the world. They don't really need to even be quick about this. They can just... There you go. <laughs> An SU-27. Sorry, 25 of all things. And there you go. And you have 8 Rova 8 left. If you ever want to attack this position, and I would seriously recommend against it, you're going to have to coordinate with probably at least 3, potentially 5 players. Because you will need a lot of things. Um, if I were to attack this position, I would first start by mortaring the buildings here and there. Uh, and potentially not even mortaring, but going for big RD. Howitzers, preferably. Start weakening the enemy infantry. Then, uh, you throw down more smoke. Not the smoke over here that you see here. This doesn't work. I would start to smoke this position. To make sure that... This looks like a really dead smile. Uh, this way that the infantry that's in here, in these buildings... Uh, let's say there's HEGMs potentially here and or here... They cannot shoot at your units as they're trying to cross this bridge and this bridge. If you're going to cross the bridge at all. Because you can also use amphibious vehicles and just float across. That would be a potentially safer option because the bridge is very predictable. Anyway, phase one already. Phase two, smoke. And then you push in. But it's not going to be easy. It's going to cost you a lot of forces. And the first question should be, is it worth it? Do you really need to take this position? Are there no other positions where you can be of more service? And I would say that that position is over here on the left. Because we got the Panzer Grenadiers, we got Mortar 2s. Uh, with a fast motorized deck, you could cross the bridge and then try to make a maneuver like this. And once you're getting in here, you can start to occupy this tree line and potentially make the hop into this town over here. And now... If you finally get here, and this is not going to be easy because you're going to be facing a lot of probably Red 4 planes and infantry. If you can place an ATGM unit over here, you can neutralize anything that starts to reinforce this line. 
So this becomes a no-go sector. That's, if I was a motorized deck in this game, I would probably try and play it like that. Because any other option is just going to be met with overwhelming defenses. Especially over here in Charlie. Now I'm quite surprised that the Tsefa A didn't get, or Tsefa B didn't immediately get shot down there. Uh, it finally did. But it actually took longer than I had expected. Uh, Yaskando is coming back for round two. This time with just a couple of Bedouins. And they're getting shot at by a Senka sniper. And, uh, well, that is a really big gun that these guys carry. So, the Bedouins, there, <laughs> there goes one. I mean, what's he trying to do? There's no real way to get any unit across the bridge. There's no real way to get into a position of cover, because none of this is cover. Speaking of cover, this tree line, if you have the town, if you're playing Red 4, just fire a couple of shots at this tree line. You're bound to hit something. Be it recon, HEGM, potentially anti-air, uh, anti-air infantry or vehicle, doesn't really matter. <clears throat> You're bound to hit something. This tree line over here. This one and that one. Potentially this one as well. This tree line here. Because that's really the only positions of cover that are currently on this area. So, and actually this one as well, where the hussards are. That is a very, well, very predictable position where you can almost always find some sort of a reconnaissance unit. Similarly, if you're on blue 4, this tree line, these, um, depending on, where, on who has the town, this line here, and eventually that line. Basically anything that has more than two trees together is where you can probably expect to find more units. Now at this point, we have a Leclerc crossing the bridge. T-72B is immediately getting its head shot off. There you go. Another T-72B comes out. See, if you're a motorized deck, French or otherwise, you could very easily ambush the T-72B as it comes in here. The French have some really good anti-tank weapons. Uh, Legion 90 come to mind. Those could be very handy in this position. But basically anything that has a, a high-end anti-tank weapon, preferably an Apalas, could be extremely deadly against vehicles which try to traverse these woods. And also, if you have these woods over here, so you capture this position, I would then try to start sneaking units over here, and especially anti-air infantry. Because you see that these jets, this one, this one, this one, they keep flying over. The reinforcement position from Red Force planes is over here. So what the planes are going to do is about this. They're going to try and make this route. Which means that if you have your AA infantry over here, they will not shoot at them until they get across this hill over here. Once they're there, you can start to panic them, potentially stun them, and hopefully further anti-air efforts could finish them off, like the Shilkas currently, or sorry, Stingers. Um, right now they might have a hard time shooting them down, but just having some sort of anti-air infantry over here would really help. Also, with more motorized, you just... This is far better of a, an operating area than the open area here is. You don't want to cross this open area. Now, I believe that the French car is building up another push. Uh, I was paying attention to the other flank, but I already watched the replay once, and he said that he's going to do an assault over here. I think that's your first mistake. Don't try to assault. You don't need this position. Sure enough, it's four points, but... It is a destruction match, and you're going to be throwing so much stuff, trying to kill everything in Charlie, trying to defeat the buildings, trying to take over the buildings, that it is just not worth it. You just won't be able to get there. Even if you have your own mortar support, even if you have big tube arty support in the form of paladins, it is going to be a meat grinder, and it is not going to be pleasant. Also, your HGM Milan F3s are getting spotted. Uh, I'm not sure if Red can see them. No, Red cannot see them. Oh, what are you doing? Iskando over here is once again pushing with a couple of units. He doesn't even have reconnaissance. He's just getting these uh, shot called Dalet killed off. There goes the Gazelle. Oh, the Gazelle managed to not get hit. SPC Spooder is trying to get in with a couple of infantry units over here. I wonder what he's bringing and how exactly he hopes to deploy those. Because they know you're there. What does Red 4 have here? Yep, they definitely know you're there. I'm actually surprised that they don't have any anti-air infantry over here. 
or a cheap anti-air unit. Shilka over here should stop any helicopter offensive pushing in. Now, the sniper team is trying to defend against the helicopter. Actually seemingly got a hit on. Uh, killing off one of the helos. The other one tries to drop off. Yes, it's dropping off the infantry. Canadian Airborne. Against Special Niyadnotki. Good luck. These are not too big of a... Oof. <clears throat> That's not helpful. There goes the HGM vehicle. You really need to push up now. Of course, Blue doesn't know exactly what they have, but they know that they're not getting shot at by helicopter or by anti-air. Which means that a helicopter over here could help. And the mortar from the French Scar could also help over here. If you see a special Niyadnotki or any other infantry, recon, whatever, start shooting it. You need to start blinding the enemy over here. Because right now, you do have a bit of an opportunity. Not so much with a motorized deck, because if you're a motorized deck, then you're going to be traversing all the way over here or there. And you simply won't get there in time. We saw su 25 fly over. Those things are going to be very, very deadly. Now, the car gamer says plus 15. Um, car gamer also says I'm shelling. French car is putting up smoke. So there's definitely some good coordination going in. Yaskando once again sacrifices another Israeli recon unit. This was absolutely pointless. Now he pushes in, but this is a pretty half-assed push. What he has is one VAP 2013 in the lead, with the second one empty. Um, I quite like this. If it's a distraction, then by all means, because it lets the enemy fire more of their well, precious ammunition, because it's not that easy to resupply this position. Let them fire their precious ammunition into this empty VAP. Another empty VAP also going in, this time around with an autocannon. A couple of ERC 90s, which you have absolutely no use of. Because let's say you park the ERCs over here. They can see shit. They can only really see, let's say, this area. Because the rest has been smoked out. So the ERCs are really not the right units to use here. If you're going to get this position, bring all the infantry that you can. And right now, uh, sure enough, he might have lost a unit over here that potentially contained infantry. But you're trying to push an enemy position where you know there is likely going to be more than one infantry unit. And you're trying to push it with one unit of infantry. Oh, sorry, two units of infantry. Three. Chasseurs, Legion, and another Legion. Now, these VABs, they can swim. So you don't have to drop them off at the, uh, the uh, well, in front of the bridge. Just do it here. This is going to be your landing zone. Because from here, your legionnaires can... Let's see where the buildings... Here and there and there. Charge this, charge that, charge that way. Right now what's going to happen is that the enemy knows that you're coming. Because, hey, there's a big smoke screen. There's units moving around. And let's see what Redford can actually see. Well, they can't quite see you, but you can bet your ass that they know you're coming. I wonder how much artillery is already being trained on this position. There we go. Plamen. These guys can deploy a lot of HE really quickly. And that's exactly what they're doing. They don't even need to know exactly where you are. Because they know that you're going to be coming from this box over here. And that's pretty much where the anti or where the artillery is armed. Or aimed at. So one of the legionnaire groups immediately gets stunned. The other one's pushing in. Right into the receiving arms of Eric Skoyayikari, Granatomet, um, HGM team, Commandosi. Shasuras are going to be running into the Senke, which they might be able to kill. Then a VAB comes in. Solo. Again, a VAB is, a, well, a pretty weak unit in the sense that it has almost no armor. It can definitely do damage against the Eriks, but not at this range. Because at this range, the Eriks will kill it. They will only need one shot. There you go. Vehicle dead. If you want to be supporting against the Eriks, um, you're going to have to wait for this smoke screen to go and then deploy your units over here. Because then, as your infantry is going to be pushing in from that side, you can provide autocannon support more or less in that direction without the risk of losing the vehicle. Right now, you're just too close. And as you're too close, you're using or you're losing a lot of units. Now, of course, I have perfect information because I'm on neutral view. He wouldn't exactly know what is in here. He just sees the Eriks. 
he sees the Commandosi, and I'm also keeping in the back of my mind that he is a newer player, about 20 hours in, as his description said. So that means that he'll not really have this uh, encyclopedic knowledge of all the units and the capabilities and their armaments, etc. I believe that that takes a lot more time. So I don't really blame him for not knowing exactly what these guys have. He says, my god, they're at least 100 infantry. Not actually 100. Well, if you want to really add up the numbers, maybe you're going to get about 60. But there's really not that much infantry in here. Two squads of commando commandos, one group of commando C, and I'm calling these commandos because they're actually special forces. You got the uh, Bretska Pes, which are regular 15 man trained or 15 man groups, with, and that's what I quite like about them in this position. 1400 meter range, 15 AP uh, anti-vehicle weapons, which means that from this position, any vehicle that's trying to cross the bridge will immediately get shut down by these guys. You got one group of Senka, you got one Vihor, which is going to be, well, actually not that hard to kill, because if you can push into a building and then try to get an AT weapon on it, it will pretty quickly die, especially with the high-end French anti-tank weapons. And then you got the Commando Infantry, and finally a Granatomet. That's all. It's really not as bad as he makes it out to be. But if you're trying to offload your infantry too early, and you don't really open up with a shelling, then it's going to be hard to get in here. Unfortunately, at the same time, Red 4 is pushing hard on the left flank. So that bridgehead, that, that beachhead that Blue had established over here, it's gone. And Red 4 has immediately plugged the gap. Spatsnaz grew and VDV. Vehicles that are crossing this bridge are going to have a really hard time getting there. So really your only option is helicopters. And that's something that currently Red 4 does not have a lot of defenses against. Well, except for this trail over there. But that means you can still offload infantry quite close to this town. Keep in mind, French motorized could be very valuable in that position. Because... As I mentioned, helicopters are really the only way to get in, unless you're amphibious. And that's what the French motorized vehicles are. They have a 45 kilometer amphibious speed. So in this case, and sure enough, you would get spotted, just try to cross from here to there. Well, just uh, try to cross from here to there. It's not going to be pleasant. You might lose some units. But if you have a couple of, uh, let's say, more anti-air over here, so this is going to be AA infantry, or AA units altogether, then you can pretty reliably shut down any plane in this direction that is trying to go for your, uh, your amphibious crossing. The only real risk that you do face is that once you get to this position, the enemy is immediately going to start shelling that. And that is something you don't really have a lot of defenses against. Also, if a vehicle dies whilst carrying infantry and it's doing an amphibious operation, the infantry immediately dies. Swimming is not something that we do over here. Now front towards enemies trying to defeat as many units here as possible. Ooh, no, 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 no. Get the Briusa if you want to live. Yep. Yeah. That did take a fair amount of damage. But the Apache's alive. Now, this is pretty much, uh, well, this is, I guess this is where I'm going to conclude my uh, commentary in this vid. I'll put it on a bit for more fast forward. Iskando is once again trying to push in with vehicles. Uh, I think that this guy really needs a lot more training. He just keeps throwing units at this strong position. And he's getting punished for it. But he does not seem to realize that all of those losses are really hurting his team. Overall, the score, 24-30 versus 33-05. But, in this case, Blue 4 is seriously losing the fight. Because Red 4 is going to get slightly more income than Blue with this Charlie sector. And Blue just keeps, well, for some reason, pig-headedly pushing this position. He's getting Panzer Grenadiers to move across the bridge without any kind of fire support without any kind of vehicles, without any kind of mortar support. Sure enough, there was some smoke being thrown up, but they just got killed off very, very easily. So if you see that your team is losing, 
try to establish a more defensive position and let the enemy make a mistake. Because you don't have to push. It This, well, yes, this can be the downside of destruction. Where it just becomes really, really campy. And I know that some people really hate that. Especially this map is very, very inviting to campy strategies. And that works pretty much both ways. Because let's say that blue had captured this position. Then it would still be difficult for blue to get out from here. Because you got uh, this bridge over here. Which is running into a wide open area. You got this one over here which is similarly difficult because you don't have any stepping stones. So if you want to get from here all the way to there. You're going to need either a massive amount of smoke. Or a massive amount of forces which is going to be very quickly countered by probably red for airborne. Being either helicopters or planes or both. So it's going to be very difficult to get from Charlie to Hotel and Golf. Um, this is problematic, to say the least. You got BTR-70s, BMP 685, so basically throwaway vehicles. Spatsnaz, Tunguska, T-55AM, T-62MV, Conquerors. There's tanks, there's recon, there's vehicles, there's a lot of everything. Try to defend. I would just give up this position altogether, Echo. Unless you really have a couple of good infantry units. And the French kind of do. Legionnaires, Legionnaire 90 with the Eryx. From this position over here, I'm not sure why I marked that as a tank, but from this position over here you can shoot vehicles which are coming up and you can one-shot them. Then any infantry could be met from, let's say, this position with the uh, Commando Para. Uh, or Commander Marine. And they will start to wipe out the infantry one by one. You will also need infantry that defeats helicopters. Or that the defense flanks. So an HGM over here. And uh, an AA unit over there. There, that's That sort of looks like an A. Because then you can shoot vehicles which are doing exactly this. Which are coming up over here. And any helic... Whoa, that's big. Any helicopters that are trying to flank will get shot at here. Or uh, in this vicinity. So if helicopters try to push here, you can move your mistrals to this building. And from here you can engage those units as they're pushing. And that could, with not too big of an investment from your own forces, still cost Red for a lot of material. That's how I would try to play a French motorized deck on this map. Um, but, well, there was just a couple of compounding mistakes. And I don't exactly blame the French car for trying to get to this position because it is nice to have and that four points of income does help. Oh no. Not again, dude. Once again, trying to crash into a strong position here. At least he's blinded them. Once again, he's offloading his chasseurs early. Vabs. Perfectly amphibious. Float across. Chasseur 85 pushing in. Elrak F1. Uh, not exactly one shots the Vihor, but it'll at least do a bit of damage. And the Vihor seems to have already taken some damage, potentially from the Leclerc. Yeah, I think the Leclerc is doing damage to the Vihor here. Good smoke wall here by uh, John Fox, but he also has a bigger problem over here. That's coming in from the other side. That's the Akula and the K52. Anyway. Don't push into a strong position if you don't absolutely have to. In this case, you didn't absolutely have to. You could just have uh, used those forces elsewhere. Set up a strong defensive position here. This building here, these, uh, this building block, it really lends itself to a defensive position. You can use so many buildings here because they're all relatively small groups. HGM, anti-air, anti-infantry... You can get a powerful combination, and then once Red tries to push into you, that's when you punish them. That's when you get a lot of points. Because this game, especially the destruction mode, of course, it is all about the points. So let the enemy make the mistake. And right now, you just let your own teammates make the mistake. Um, especially Yaskando, I have no idea why he just kept going into this position here. Now it's SPC Spooter as well. I saw uh, Rousseau trying to push in here repeatedly. I saw the French Scar trying to push in. But they were all solo initiatives. 
this is why I am usually on Discord with a couple of uh, my buddies. Because especially if you want to do something as complicated as this, as entrenched as this, you're going to need more forces. You're going to need a concentration. And you will need allies in order to get that done. Now, if you don't have somebody to play with, you can always join my Discord. There's a link down below in the description where you can find the uh, Discord that I have. There's usually people on, um, and, well, it's a relatively uh, welcoming, commu uh, welcoming community. I try to keep it open as much as possible. So, if you don't have somebody to play with, or you just want to try and get into some smaller games, or learn from people, you're always welcome to join the community. And uh, sure enough, sometimes the guy, guys might cuss at you because you're just losing units. You're costing them the game. But you will also learn stuff. And in my experience, learning always goes better if you have people to do it with. People who have already seen what the enemy can do, uh, already have more knowledge of what their own forces can do, and potentially what your forces can do better than you know it. So let other people help you learn. Now, as expected, Yaskando, 255 versus 1075, not a very good result. Um, Nemon, I'm not sure where exactly he was operating. Lost more than he killed. Same goes for Thomas, same goes for Spooder. Uh, French car lost also a lot relative to his kills, because all of those pushes into that uh, Charlie sector just got wiped out. Then, uh, the car gamer actually made positive. Front towards enemy made positive, and Anthony just ended up doing no kills whatsoever. I'm not exactly sure what he was operating. Rousseau got zero kills and lost 455 forces. So I think overall, the whole team was not very experienced. Which, well, it happens. Anyway, that's my analysis of the game. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. Before I forget, I have a Twitter now. Yeah, believe it or not. Um... A couple of days ago, I got a good scare because I was temporarily locked out of my own account, uh, my YouTube account, that is, so I couldn't get in. And I thought, geez, this is a really fragile thing. If at some point either my channel gets hacked, deleted, or whatever, I have no way of contacting you guys. So um, I set up a couple more people, or uh, a couple more ways to uh, get in touch with me, and that's through the Twitter, and also, of course, through the Discord. You don't even have to be active in it, but you can always refer to it as a news medium in case something goes wrong with the channel. So please join either of those channels to make sure that you don't completely lose touch if something, God forbid, happens to the YouTube channel. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the vid. Hope you found it educational as well as entertaining. And I shall catch you guys soon for more videos.